brothers and sisters in Islam, today we celebrate the accomplishments, the sacrifices, and the contributions of a single family. A family that is not ours directly. We are related to them, we're first cousins. But it's not our family. It is a fam our family comprises of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It comprises of his wives Khadija, Aisha, Umm Salama, and so on. It comprises of his daughters Fatima and all his other daughters. It comprises of Ali radiallahu anhu. It comprises of Uthman radiallahu anhu, the two sons-in-laws of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But this rukun of Islam, this essential pillar of Islam, without which a Muslim ceases to be a Muslim, this is a celebration of another family. The celebration in itself bears testimony to the honesty, the integrity of the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you look at the formation and the objective of, of rituals, ibadat, in other faiths, you would find that they are directly connected to the founders of that faith. Whether you're taking Christmas or any other such religious practice, they're directly connected to the founders of the faith. This Hajj is a celebration of the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And certainly Ibrahim alayhi salam is part of our family, but only the extended part thereof. Only the extended part thereof. We celebrated Arafah yesterday. And today they are pelting the Jamarat, which symbolizes, according to some scholars, the expulsion of the evil elements within the human body, within the human psyche, <coughs> within the human soul. But it also celebrates that particular event where Shaitan Iblis tried to get between Ismail alayhi salam and his dedication to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he said to Ibrahim alayhi salam when being confronted with this most horrendous of, of activities. He said, if'al ma tasha' Ya Abba tif'al Oh my father, do as you have been commanded. Satajiduni insha'allahu min as sabirin You will find me amongst those who exercises forbearance who exercises patience. We celebrate that. We celebrate that event. We celebrate the enormous contributions and sacrifices that his mother made. We do that by recalling her running between Safa and Marwa in the desert of Mecca, which those of you who have had occasion to visit can bear testimony to its heat. And in that heat, Ibrahim alayhi salam was asked to leave the two of them there. And Ibrahim alayhi salam did so. And Hajar ran to and fro looking for water. And today we do the same. Our Hajj remains incomplete without memorializing, celebrating that particular event the sacrifice of a mother for her child. We are required to make tawaf of the Kaaba, the house of Allah, which the Quran tells us, that the first house established for worship of the one universal God, Emphasis on the fact that this was one universal God was the one in Makkah. 
In it are many symbols and signs, not to mention the place of Ibrahim. Those of you who have gone there can bear testimony to this as well. There is no place in the entire haram that you could call Maqam Muhammad. There is a Maqam Ibrahim. It celebrates Ibrahim. Ibrahim has, has a special place in Islam. Because it is part of Islam's mission as the final religion from Allah to humanity. Ibrahim plays a pivotal role in that. He is known as Abu al-Anbiya, the father of the, of the Anbiya. Not only because so many of the Judaic prophets have come through him, from Ishaq, his sons, to Ismail, to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Ismail alayhi salam, from Yaqub to Ishaq to, ya to Ismail alayhi salam, all of these Anbiya trace their ancestry to Ibrahim alayhi salam. But also because Ibrahim embodied so many virtues and qualities. Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Quran tells us, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifa, wa lam yakum min al mushrikeen. Ibrahim was an ummah. Ibrahim is the only person in the Quran called an ummah. And you may have heard this term previously. It generally refers to a collectivity of people. It refers to the entire Muslim ummah. So one translation of that would be that Ibrahim was such a colossal figure that he can only be described as being equivalent, his personality as being equivalent to an entire ummah. This is Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Quran further goes on to tells us, tell us about the qualities that he embodied, which makes him this embodiment of Ummah. Says he was virtuous, he was kind, he was wise, he was forbearing, he had perseverance. All of these qualities is what made Ibrahim Ibrahim. But ultimately, for the future of mankind, Ibrahim was the gateway towards a universal Tawheed. Remember, it was Ibrahim alayhi salam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed. وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا Announce the Hajj, and people will come to you on foot. They will come to you on camels. وَعَلَى ضَامِرِ from the far off places in this world, from lands that you don't even know exist. This is that Ibrahim alayhi salam. And notice that the Quran then goes on to say, Thumma ilayk, talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. These are glorious verses, we have to remember them. We have to remember them because we are considered pariahs in the family of religions. That ours is the only religion that cannot live in harmony with other religions. We are intolerant. We are intolerant. We don't know what the word interfaith relations means. So listen to this verse. Then Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, We then instructed you, we inspired you that you follow the religion, the path of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That you follow the path of Ibrahim. So on the one hand, this religion celebrates the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam as Ashraful Makhluqat, as the greatest of human beings, as Rahmatan Lil Alameen, as a mercy unto humanity at large. But in terms of its origins, it takes its cue from Ibrahim alayhi salam. Not because we want to, but because Allah instructed us so, to do so. But Tabi'a Ibrahim Hanifa. We have to follow Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
this whole idea of an, a Judeo-Christian civilization is a brand new idea concocted around the year 1820. And those who use it should know full well that it actually refers to a moment in history when Christians were work working their tails off to convert Jews to Christianity. It had nothing to do with interfaith relations. It had nothing to do with celebrating the great civilization that is the Judeo-Christian civilization. Nothing to do with that. 1400 years ago, 1450 odd years ago, 55, 56, what is it? We were told in Medina al Murawwara, Ya Ahl al Kitab, ta'alu ila kalimatin sawa in bainana wa bainakum. O people of the book, O you Christians and Jews, come let us sit together and work together to build a better society. Today we call that interfaith relations something that was initiated 1450 odd years ago. Let us come together, work together on things that are common to us. That we, that we worship none but Allah and we ascribe not partners with him. And we ascribe not partners with him. These words are very important. They seem to allude to certain things that were outside our grasp 1,400 years ago. 1,400 years ago, we didn't quite see this connection that is almost universal, it would seem. There is a suggestion that this Ibrahim salam's message even got to India. And so you have the Brahmins. And the chief deity there is married to a woman, and her name is Saraswati. Sounds familiar? What was Ibrahim salam's wife's name? Sarah. So there are striking similarities here. We don't know for sure. But certainly when you look at the Brahmins as a chosen community, then you can hear that chosenness of Judaism resonating within, Hindu, the community, within the Hindu, Hindu community. So Ibrahim salam is pivotal to the well-being of humanity. We have to understand what his message is from Islam. We have to understand that ours is the only religion that celebrates is Ibrahim salam. Ours is the first religion that calls for a universal platform on which people of the same faith, those who believe in one Allah and those who believe in the last day can work together towards the betterment of humanity. And we call those people the people of the book. Ya Ahl al-Kitab. In other words, people who receive revelation as opposed to inspiration, which is what the Buddha got, for instance. So these people of the book are being called upon to come together. These are important elements that we have to use in our daily discourse when we are confronting the demons of Islamophobia, when we are confronting the demons of, that try to marginalize us and make us irrelevant to a global discourse.